Mike, <clears throat> you know that's not the Mark Herman we know. You know that's not the Mark Herman we know. <laughs> Garza and Bohannon. That's what I was after. I took the plastic sample and told my tailor, let's go. Just like a green screen, baby.
We have the uh, winner of game one with uh, Coach McCaffrey joining us as well as Jordan Bohannon and Luca Garza. I understand, Coach, you're passing on your opening statement. So we'll uh, take questions for the players first. Please direct your question to the player that you're asking it and not ask a general question. Who has the first question? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, David Jones from uh, Penn Live for Luca. Um, when you guys were down 11 fairly late in the first half, I think it was, what, what did you think was the feeling of your team? Um, and was there anything you wanted to accomplish personally to get your, your guys in a different mindset? Because you ended up in a different mindset. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the timeouts at that stretch when it was 18 to 5, uh, I think those were key. You know, everyone was communicating, and uh, it's just, just a great feeling the timeout. We knew a couple shots we missed. You know, we missed some chippies uh, around the rim, and uh, you know we needed to get back and uh, get some stops and uh, rebound. You know, they started to get too many offensive rebounds. So I think, as a group, you know, individually, I wanted to get inside and post up more and post deeper. I thought in the in the beginning, you know, some of those guys were pushing me out, out of the spots I wanted to get to, and I think I did a, a better job of that through the course of the game, trying to get deeper, because um, it's easy for them, you know, come double or come poke me when I'm when I'm posting up the 17 feet away. So. I try to do a better job in that, and I think as, as a collective group, we all try to focus in and, and, and string together some stops. Would both of you guys uh, care to discuss the impact your zone had on them? Start with Jordan, please. Yeah, I think we did a good job of uh, just kind of getting them a little hesitant. Um, they, they're a really well-coached team. They run a really deliberate offense, and we knew that coming in. and. Um, we started out man, started the game, and um, they got a couple easy baskets, so we changed it up a little bit. I thought our press was really great tonight. Um, we, they didn't know when to go or when not to go, so um, I thought we did a really good job just changing the pace of the game and controlling the tempo, especially in the second half. Yeah, I thought we were communicating. You know, they got some terrific shooters um, in Jennifer and Cumberland, and they were trying to run Jennifer to the corners and try to get him some open looks. And I think uh, you know he hit a couple early where he was wide open, and so we tried to key in on that, and we did a great job just moving around trying to you know make those shots tough for him. As for either of the players, what did you guys do to regroup after the tough stretch to end the regular season? Uh, we just worked really hard. Um, it was wasn't a lot of fun uh, going in that stretch. Um, you know we played really well at the beginning of the season, middle of the season, and. Um, but that's life in the Big Ten. That's why we're, that's why we got eight teams in the in the NCAA tournament. I don't think we've lost a game yet in the NCAA tournament as well. So that shows a lot how powerful and, and strong this conference was. So um, a lot of it was just playing really good teams, and we knew that, and that prepared us to get ready for this NCAA tournament. Yeah, we just needed to stay confident with each other, and we know what we're capable of. And you know, we keep saying that, but it's true. You know, we know what we can do when we play at our best. And uh, you know, it was just. It's great to see tonight, you know, even when they got up, you know, we, we stayed composed and, and were able to get to uh, play better. Mark. <laughs> Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Jordan, I'd like to ask you, what is it like for you guys to lean on Luca in, in, those, in those tough situations? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really easy to. I mean, he's came up big in a lot of games this year, so. Um, he, he, he was re really dominant down low tonight, or this morning, I guess. And uh, uh, we, we knew if we fed him, in, fed him the ball down low, um, he was either going to get an easy basket, draw a foul, or kick it out. And I thought he did a really good job of all those three things when he did end up getting the ball. <laughs> Any other questions for our players? <clears throat> All right, you guys can actually go get something to drink and eat now. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> eat some yes. goldfish. Any questions now for Coach McCaffrey? Mike? I'm Michael Presti, NCAA.com. Fran, you point for the tournament, you look up, and it's 18 to 5. What do you, what do you say to them at that point? Well, I think the most simple approach is the most logical one is there was 35 minutes to go, uh, so there's no, no time to panic. It could easily have been we were up and we have to keep playing well. So we made some adjustments, we changed the defense, uh, 
and change some personnel a little bit. You start pushing some different buttons. But I think the critical thing is that the players maintain confidence. You know, you don't start screaming and yelling at them, blaming them because they didn't rotate and block out. Uh, you know, we talked about block out. They had nine offensive rebounds in the first half for 11 points. You know, if I'm spazzing and yelling at everybody for that, they're not going to lock into what we need to do on offense. What defense are we in? Who's on the floor for them? Where's Cumberland? Who do we need to get the ball to? So you just try to stay very businesslike at that point. Plenty of time. We're going to continue to do what we do. Maybe call a different offensive set or alignment. Give them a little bit of a different look because when you're matching up, this is what they do so well. They, they, they're, they're pretty good at it. So if you stand and you kind of run similar action, they're going to they're lock you up. So you got to have more ball movement, more people movement, more movement with a purpose uh, to get better shots. And then you know, we just needed to see it go in a little bit there. Thankfully, Isaiah made too early because we really were struggling. And it was the five that you're talking about. But eventually, you know, Luca got going. When I put TC back in after he had two fouls. He made a couple buckets. And, we, and Joe got a big one. We, we just sort of, sort of settled down. Then you felt like, OK, we can attack this thing successfully. Doc? Coach, did, did you play a lot of zone this year? And we did. Uh, OK. What, why in your mind did it work so well today? Well, sometimes you play zone because you think a zone will work against a particular team. Sometimes you play zone to change up what wasn't working. A man wasn't working. Uh, we felt like we could mix our pressure three-quarter court. We played a couple different ways. And then our half-court zones, which we played a couple different ways. So that would, at the very minimum, keep them in front of us so we can see where they are. Uh, you're not guarding as much action. Uh, you know, you can sort of surround a painted area on a missed shot, and I think it helps you rebound. Some, some coaches would argue that it doesn't help you rebound. You know, I, think it, I think it does. It keeps everybody, keeps everybody there. And it put more pressure on them to shoot threes. You know, they're a team that's pretty good at it, but, you know, you know tonight they were 6 for 27. Uh, Michael Beller, Sports Illustrated. How much time do you spend this week coming into today talking about that it might feel a little bit like a true road game being so close to Cincinnati? Truthfully, not very much. Uh, the, the thing about NCAA tournament play, there's, you know, there's other teams represented here today that don't care who wins this game. Uh, so the Tennessee people, the Colgate people, they don't, they don't care. I knew the Hawk fans would be the one that let's go Hawks cheer. Knew there'd be more Cincinnati people, but uh, it's an NCAA game. Uh, you know, I didn't feel like in any way, shape, or form it was a road game to me. You know, I mean, I coached in '09. We we played Ohio State in Dayton, and I, I remember like like it was yesterday. And everybody from Louisville was rooting for Siena. You know, so it's a different kind of deal. Uh, our guys were locked in. You know. Every game in our league is a big stage. It's national TV. It's an NBA arena. And we're used to being on the road. We just played in, at the United Center. So you know, the critical thing is to know and understand, wh what do we have to do to beat Cincinnati? What do they do well? What can we take away? What can we do to exploit them? And not worry about who's in the 15th row yelling for one team or another. Mark. You never know how a, a freshman is going to respond. How, how, what is it about Wieskamp that made him so be able to be so poised? Well, you know, the thing so that was impressive, I think, about him today was it didn't start real well for him. You know, a lot of times when that happens, guys struggle for 40 minutes. He has always done a really good job of figuring out, okay, what are they doing to me? What are they doing to us? What can I do that's different than what I've been doing? He's a very cerebral guy in that sense. And I think as the game progressed, you saw him become more confident in what he was doing at both ends. You know, he gets 19 points. It's a huge three. But, uh, you know, huge shot block at a very critical situation. I mean, he's just a guy that does a lot of things to help us win. And uh, you can count on him to make those kinds of decisions in his head and not be a mistake guy. Mike. 
not that the NCAA tournament always correctly reflects a league's strength, but what does it say about the Big Ten that you're six and zero so far in this tournament? Well, I, you know, we've been saying all year long that it's the most competitive league in the country, top to bottom, and you sort of expect Big Ten coaches to make those kinds of statements, you know. But the reality is, we actually believe that, and so I think it's it's proving it. Fran, what you said before about keeping your poise on, you're a hot-blooded guy, you're a Philly kind of guy. and At times. <laughs> when, did, was there a point in your career where you learned how valuable it was to, to keep your, your, your poise under those kinds of circumstances, you know, 18 to 5, that kind Very of thing? Very definitely. Uh, one of my mentors, John McLeod, <clears throat> he was the best at that. And he would always say, you know, when it gets sticky, you can't, you can't yell at him. That's what he would say. So, you know, when you see me get hot-blooded, there are various reasons for that, and it happens, despite what some people might think, very rarely. It doesn't happen very much in practice. It doesn't ha happen much in the locker room. At halftime, oh, I bet coach went in there and yelled at him. No. But at crunch time and in key moments of the game, you, you, you can't lose your mind and start yelling at them. It's only going to lead to more mistakes. At that point, you need to build confidence. Uh, three big scores in the second half, there you go, uh, off of underneath out of bounds. Two of them came out of a timeout, a Garza three, a Bear three, and then you had a Garza layup. Those go-to sets for you guys underneath out of bounds, or is that something that came out of the timeouts? They're, they're go-to sets for us. You know, but the, the difference is you, know, you can run certain action but then you can move people around in that action, so it, it might look different. So we ran a, a typical action, but we moved people around. And that's how Luca got the three in particular. He's not usually in that spot, usually a guard or a perimeter guy. Thank you, Coach McCaffrey. Thank you. Congratulations. Cincinnati coach and players in three minutes. We'll start our questions for Justin. Jennifer and Trayvon Scott, please again, if you have a specific question, um, ask it particularly for the, the player you would like to have the answer to first. If you, you want to hear from both players, just address one of them first and, and ask the other to follow. Thank you. We have our questions first, and then we'll get to Coach Cronin. Questions for our players? Just in that moment, walking off the floor, Coach Cronin grabbed you and Kane and, and gave you a big hug, it looked like. How tough of a moment, I guess, how thankful of a moment are you to ha share that with your head coach? Um, I'm, I'm very appreciative. Everything that I've done throughout my four years here is, is, is devoted to coach. And, you know, he, like I said you know, previously, he didn't stay on me through all four years, no matter what, if it's off the court or if it's on the court. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative of what he has done for me. Off 
also for, also for Justin. You're up 18-5. At some point, they switched to a zone. How much did that affect you guys? Uh, well, you know, we knew that coming into the game. You know, we knew that we was going to start off in man and, and they was going to go to zone. So um, we, was, we was prepared for that. So, um, you know, some shots didn't go in. And, you know, that's a part of the game. Trey, how much did the uh, foul trouble on Nas take you guys out of what you wanted to do at the end of the first half there and then in the second half as well? I mean, it, it affected us a lot. But, I mean, in my opinion, it was plenty of games, you know, when we had to go to different lineups like that. And, I mean, we came out successful. So that's what's so frustrating about the loss. Like, we, we couldn't get it. We didn't get it done today, you know, like we usually do. But, I mean, in my, I mean, if, if, if Nas, you know, he would have fought through, you know, played smarter, you know, stayed in, I know the outcome of the game would have been different. But, I mean, he played hard, you know, he was trying, and I mean, we just came up short. Anybody else? Justin, I'll ask you a quick question. What, when, once the three-quarter pressure, half-court pressure kind of picked up, you guys were getting shots much later in the shot clock. Was that a, a, a direct result of that pressure, or was it something that you were trying to do in the first half? Um, well, you know, we was told to attack. You know, when, when somebody presses you, you're supposed to attack, you're not supposed to lay back. And, you know, it was like a 50-50. Sometimes we attacked and, and sometimes we just lay back. And when we lay back, we, it involved turnovers and, and led to layups. And, you know, that, that was a big piece to the game. And that was a big turn to, you know, them getting the lead. Yeah, for both players, you had such a great year, in some ways an unexpected year from outsiders to have an early NCAA exit. Can you kind of describe what, what that feels like right now? Trayvon? I mean, it's tough. Like, it's tough. I mean, yeah, a lot of people doubted us, you know. A lot of people said we probably wouldn't have got to where we at today. But, I mean, we stayed together. We got a great, you know, head man right here, Coach Cronin in front of us listening. Um, but, I mean, it's tough going out. I mean, every team has goals, and this was not part of our goals right here. But, I mean, the toughest thing about it is, you know, losing Justin and Kane. Like, I mean, we owe everything this whole season to these guys. Like, I'm doing all that. I appreciate you, bro, for everything. <laughs> so, love you, bro. Love you too, bro. I mean, it's just frustrating. Um, well, I, I say it's tough. You know, I didn't picture that, you know, we was going to lose this game today. You know, I picture my senior year still going on. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it happened. And, um, you know, I couldn't be more proud of the guys, you know, that, that was with me. Through the whole, through the whole way, and you know, as long as they believed in me, I believed in them, and you know, that's what makes us such a family. Our thanks to Justin and Trayvon, and now we'll uh, let them go get refreshed. Take questions for Coach Cronin. You can make a statement. That would be great. Thank you. I would like to congratulate Iowa. Uh, thought that, you know they, they were a top 25 team most of the year. Uh, obviously, uh, you know Fran's a friend of mine. Whatever happened happened. He had to miss a few games that threw him off. Uh, they get to, they got a great coach, and uh, you know I, I have nothing but tremendous respect for them and their program, and the way they do things. So uh, I think it's important to make sure that. Uh, I point that out. So uh, as far as today's game, guys, you know, we're not going to win. We give up 79 points. We, I don't know. I don't remember the last time Cincinnati's won a game where we've given up 79. Some of you guys might be able to research it. Uh, now, they're a great offensive team. Uh, somebody referenced it earlier in the plus minus. You know, we're plus 12 in the 20 minutes Nasir Brooks played. So. Uh, we didn't have the depth on the front line to deal, obviously, with uh, with their guys in, in, in their, on the interior. I thought that was probably the biggest difference in the game, if you're going to ask me what the difference in the game was. Uh, second thing is I thought we took some questionable shots uh, that are out of character for us. Uh, we played you and, and got into a – got the game going at a pace that, uh, that we couldn't set our defense enough. and. Uh, we got a little too concerned with our offense. And uh, whether it was their zone, their pressure, or, or whatever the case may be, 
Um, we got uh, we got our mind off of defense. We gave up a three on an out of bounds play. We're first or second in the country in out of bounds defense. We usually are every year because we have to be because we're not running around with lottery picks. So, uh, last thing I'll say is you heard these guys talk. Uh, so that's what I'm most proud of. You listen to Justin. I knew who he was four years ago. I've done my job. Sit here, listen to him talk like that. Trey's unbelievable as well. So two great kids. We had an unbelievable season. We had a tremendous season. So obviously tough, tough situation uh, to have to play a team that was ranked in the top 25 in the first round um, more weeks than we were. And we won our conference championship. But again, you know, I'm just a believer at the tournament's about winning it anyway. So you got to win six to win it. So I would have the same thoughts if we lose game one, two, three, four, five. Questions for Coach Cronin? Doc? Mick, did you think your guys didn't attack that zone enough? To I, don't, I, I do not think offense had anything to do with our demise. We shot, we, I thought we shot too many threes, uh, five, six feet behind the line. We had a few bad, we did take some shots I thought were questionable. Um, I don't think it was their zone that caused it. I think it was decisions by our, us. And again, you're, it's a get it done world. You know, we talked a lot about not taking the bait on those shots and making sure that uh, we threw one more pass and got them in a closeout and tried to beat them off the dribble. So we didn't do enough, good enough job with that. But again, uh, they shot 54% for the game, 50, almost 55%. So we had some egregious errors defensively. We let some of our offensive, we've won, we, we won a game this year, we shot 26% from the field at SMU. So, um, you know, stuff happens on offense, but I thought we let it affect our defensive energy. But we did take some questionable shots. Coach, uh, other than Brooks being on the bench at the end of the first half, was there anything you saw that helped them close that lead going into halftime? Oh, well, they, we, we weren't going to shut them out. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, I think you got to give credit to people. You know, I thought they made a few shots where they drove the paint, stopped, uh, pivoted two or three times, and made made a tough play. You know, obviously it's hard. You, you can't converge too much because they got shooters running around the line. Um, those are hard plays. They made they made a few of those. You know, I think uh, you know Bohannon shot at the end of the half is a great example. And he made another one in the second half where he pivoted two or three times. I thought he drug his pivot foot, but you know, of course I'm going to think that I'm the opposing coach. You know, the film will tell me whether I'm right or not. But uh, you know, they 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 like they're a great offensive team for a reason. They have been all year. Mick, you, you win 28 games, you win the conference tournament championship, but you will be judged, and you know this, by what happened today. Do you have any comment on that? Uh, I judge, just so you know, uh, I'm judged by the guys that were sitting up here. That, that's who, that's, that's my concern. Go ahead. Over here, Coach. Um, you talked yesterday about not taking these tournament appearances for granted and, and you know, your first appearance being here in Columbus. So as a coach, a coaching staff, where do you go from here after, like you said, another season where you win a conference but an early exit? Back to work. With a lot of pride, by the way. Back to work with a lot of pride. John. Mick, you obviously knew that Garza could shoot the ball. Yeah. Uh, were you surprised they went to him as much as they did, especially when they were down? And Not in the low post, I wasn't. Yeah. You know, a, a little couple bit outside? Of, yeah, a couple of, the, couple of the threes uh, that he made were pretty deep. I mean, we talked about he would shoot it. if You think he made 19 on the year. So, I mean, we talked about he would shoot it if, you know, if we didn't guard him out there. But his size obviously bothered us in the low post. He's a guy, if he catches it deep, you know, I told our guys, you know, he, he's like the, the, the two big guys for Portland and Denver and the pros. May not jump high, but he can really use his body and hands around the basket and get it in. Go ahead. Yeah, just a question about the crowd. Obviously playing so close to home, what did you think of it? What, what was we, probably, like? our, our, we, we have great fans, not a surprise at all. 
appreciate all of them. Hope everybody gets home safe. They've been great all year. I think we uh, we were sold out in season tickets this year. Uh, we have great support in our program. Coach, you talked all week about wanting down here. Sorry, sorry. about you, you know you would love to take make shots above above anything else. And and then yesterday you talked about watching Iowa hit threes on film when they started hitting the second half. Was that kind of all those? We had too many had? breakdowns. Those those. those those are things you can control. We didn't control that. So at the end of the day, I, you know, I take responsibility for that. There were some things that we did. Uh, and I'm not going to mention names of guys, but we just had breakdowns. We fell asleep on some guys. We made, uh, we were, the thing about our defense is we're supposed to be in the passing lane. So if you help, the, the guy has to go back door. He, he, we don't give up direct passes out for the three. So that was the breakdown. And we fell asleep on an out-of-bounds play, and we fell asleep, just let Jordan Bohannon shoot one in our face. But they put a lot, you know, they put 40 minutes of offensive pressure on your defense. And at the end of the day, our defense wasn't good enough today. Anything you said to Justin and Kane there at the end that you're willing to share? I challenge those guys. Um, this summer when we started up, and I can't, you know, whenever our eight weeks started in the summer, you know, I challenged them that uh, there's a difference between getting on the bus and getting on the bus to make sure your team wins. And uh, I don't think, you know, I learned this from my, from my dad years ago as a high school coach, you know, you're never going to win with bad seniors. You know, you're never, it's just never going to happen. Uh, your seniors got to be bought in, whether they're role players, whether they're scorers, defenders, whatever. They, they got to be the guys. Uh, and so I put the heat on them, and they met the challenge. I put the heat on them now in the summer because they didn't have, obviously, you know, they were just getting on the bus. And, uh, you know, they, they're, they're, their desire to win, to make sure that this program uh, did not drop off, that uh, we kept winning games. And, we did things the right way. All the things that I asked the veteran guys to do on our team that Gary Clark and Kyle did the year before. Uh, they did it all. They did everything I asked of them. So I just told them I loved them. You know, you know, that obviously, they're not the most talented players in the world, OK? Uh, Kane got recruited by Sacred Heart, and Justin's my size. You know, when I'm hugging guys that are almost my size, it tells you. You know, for the, those guys, they accomplished what, what, what their team accomplished would not have happened if they didn't, they weren't totally all in this year. So uh, that's been a trademark of our program from Justin Jackson and guys like Sean Kilpatrick and, you know, back further and further. Thank you, Coach, and congratulations you, on a great season.